Some of the strangest, most unique weapons in Battlefield can't actually be equipped on your main loadouts from the menus, but you will be able to find them lying around on specific maps in certain games. These are the battle pickup weapons, often pretty powerful special guns and devices that tend to perform differently to a lot of the standard stuff you'll be able to pick from your normal classes. Some of them just act like stronger versions of the typical weapons, but quite a few of them function in entirely different ways, and are nothing like anything else you'll be able to find, making them very distinct and individual. Today we're going to be looking at some of the quirkiest battle pickups you'll be able to find throughout the series, the ones that tend to stand out from the crowd, and seem more out of the ordinary. Here's my top 10 most unique pickup weapons in the Battlefield games. So one of the strongest guns in the franchise happens to come in the form of an old German World War I anti-tank rifle called the Tankerwehr M 1918 an absolute beast of a weapon that you'll be able to find in Battlefield 1. This thing is so powerful that you'll need to plop yourself down on a hill or mount it onto a solid surface first, and even after you fire it off, it's still going to jolt upwards like a cracked up buckaroo toy, letting its heavy bullets fly through the air and deal some devastating amounts of damage to the target it hits. Designed as an anti-vehicle weapon, you're going to be able to punch some pretty nasty holes into tanks, planes and boats from a good distance, sort of acting like an overpowered scout rifle. You might only fire one shot at a time, and it might take a bit of time to reload, but those shots are definitely going to make a big impact, making the tank of a, a bit of a nightmare towards vehicle players. But if you're a bit savage, you could always use this bad boy against other soldiers too, instantly wiping them out with a single shot with no questions asked. A really effective way to drop other players, even if it is a little bit overkill. Nevertheless though, because the tank of is just so bloody powerful compared to almost everything else you'll be able to find in Battlefield 1, this makes it a decent contender for the list. A truly brutal thing to be killed by that practically nobody is safe from, being one of the most destructive rifles in the franchise, towards both infantry and vehicle players alike. Speaking of weapons that have tons of destructive power, Next up on the list is the M32 MGL from Battlefield 4, a very deadly grenade launcher that will make you feel like a complete badass and a complete noob at the same time. This big chunk of metal is designed to cause a lot of problems for infantry players and light vehicles, with it essentially acting like a semi-automatic version of the M320 gadget. Six grenades is a lot more dangerous than one, and you can fling all of those out at a pretty quick rate, due to the M32 sort of functioning like a revolver with its rotating cylinder. With all those explosives flying in your enemy's direction, it's not going to be long before they become overwhelmed and hit the floor, especially if they get caught out in a tight space or in a building while all the fireworks are going off. The M32 isn't always the most effective thing to use, especially if you're taking on someone further away, though just like Obi-Wan taught us, having the high ground will give you a pretty nice advantage, especially with this thing, being able to shower death from above, making it a bit easier to land grenades closer to enemies and dish out some heavy amounts of splash damage. There isn't any other battle pickup quite like the M32 MGL, essentially being the king of the noob tubes. Another pretty unique grenade launching pickup weapon can be seen in Battlefield 1. The Martini Henry rifle is already a bit of an odd thing for the game to feature, being one of the only black powder weapons to appear in the franchise. But if you think that's unique, wait until you see the Martini Henry grenade launcher. This was an experimental weapon built using the stock of one of those Martini Henry rifles, but now using a completely different barrel and mechanisms, made compatible for chucking out frags rather than bullets, by firing blank cartridges to propel those grenades through the air. This launcher came along in Battlefield 1's Turning Tides DLC, made exclusive to the Infiltrator Elite kits, and just like you'd expect from a Martini Henry that lobs out high explosives, it doesn't exactly take many prisoners. Frags explode on impact, dishing out tons of damage against other players with a reasonable splash radius, so although it might take a fair bit of time to reload the weapon, with you having to replace both the grenade and the blank cartridge first in between firing, as long as you can get your grenades to land close to your enemies, or even better, on top of your enemies, then they're going to be wiped out before they even know what hits them. A Martini Henry grenade launcher isn't exactly the wackiest concept you'll see in a Battlefield game, but it's definitely not something you get to see very often either. If you've ever wanted to play as a murderous Wally, then look no further than Battlefield 4's Remote Assisted Weaponized Robot, aka the Raw. This funky little killing machine appeared in the Dragon's Teeth expansion, and kinda functions as the EOD bot's much more evil small brother, packing a hell of a lot more firepower. The Raw's kitted out with its very own M240 LMG, along with four grenade launchers, 
which can pepper any unfortunate enemy in front of you with a shower of explosives. Considering it's a small thing to be driving around, there's no denying that it's a deadly thing. Not something that you'd want to run into as you wander around the battlefield. Though if you've got enough friendlies around you to return the fire, then the roar can be dispatched fairly easily, making it quite punishing against lone targets, but not so much against a gang of players, all shooting the robot to pieces. The roar isn't exactly very accurate, because when you fire away with that mounted LMG, the recoil is going to force the bot to bounce around quite erratically, often forcing your shots off target. So it might be dangerous, but it's not always going to seem super effective all the time, especially if you're taking on players quite far away. Either way though, it's still one of the more interesting pickup weapons you'll be able to find in the series, making it a good one to add to the list. Next up on the list is a really quirky Italian weapon from Battlefield 1, the bullet spewing Villa Perosa that you'll be able to find on those Sentry Elite Kit loadouts. It's a little bit like a double barreled Automatico, the kind of thing you'd expect to be in a steampunk designer's imagination conjured up with a bunch of pipes and tubes, looking like a pretty bizarre thing to see on a World War I battlefield. Those two separate barrels worked independently from each other, unlike in the game where they preferred to spit all those bullets out at the same time, and this gave the gun a 50 round capacity, more than capable of peppering its targets with hot lead. With the Villa Perosa using a pretty weak cartridge though, this didn't exactly give it much range, kinda making it a bit rubbish for its intended purpose as an aircraft mounted gun. Nevertheless though, it still acted like a rapid firing SMG, making it a pretty interesting thing that fits nicely into Battlefield's infantry combat, being a really brutal thing to be using against any unfortunate players that happen to get in its way. It takes quite a while to reload, and loses all of its shots at a really quick rate, but the sheer volume of bullets you'll be blasting out will often be more than enough to beat anyone up close in a one-on-one -on -one gunfight. It usually takes them out in the blink of an eye, but enemies further away are likely to just get tickled by the gun due to the fact that it loses damage really quickly over distance, and due to the fact that you can't actually aim down any sights. But so long as you know the Villa Perosa's limits, it can dominate within those shorter sightlines, giving the gun a lot more close quarter effectiveness than most of the other pickup weapons in the series. If you've ever wanted to use an M60 with exploding bullets, then that was totally possible on Battlefield 4's Operation Outbreak DLC map where you can pick up a really unique variant of that weapon from a crashed chopper. This came in the form of the aptly named M60 Ultimate, basically being an M60 on steroids. But despite it just sounding like a more powerful version of the same gun, it was actually completely different in the way it looked and functioned, a very different weapon to that bog standard M60 that you'll find under support glass. Not only is this variant pimped up with its own four guard shields and bad company style smiley face grenade stickers, but it also holds a lot more ammo than normal and can't be reloaded. Not to mention the fact that you can't actually use those iron sights, limiting you to hip fire only. Though with the hip fire spread being a hell of a lot tighter than normal, and with its bullets dealing splash damage, this makes the M60 ULT a pretty deadly thing to use in closer ranges, but not so much against targets further away, which is kind of the opposite to the standard M60, being a weapon that generally excels against ranged targets instead. It's mechanically a completely different kind of gun with its own qualities, having much more in common with spray and pray weapons. And because there's only one of them in the game that can only be found on a specific map, I guess you could say that it's one of the rarest things in the series too, making it all the more interesting. Probably one of the strangest things to use as a weapon has got to be Battlefield Hardline's nail gun, which is exactly what you think it is, a building device that you'd simply pick up from a workbench and just use to launch nails at your target. Although this weaponized tool doesn't use conventional ammo or fire any bullets, its shots do sort of act like bullets anyway, just a lot more affected by gravity. It has quite a few of its own distinctive characteristics, being almost silent when you shoot and acting like a suppressed weapon, with you not popping up on the minimap as it's being used. I guess you could say that the nail guns got a lot more in common with the game's semi-automatic handguns, only with it being able to fire fast and still deal a reasonable amount of damage over all ranges especially up close, where you only have to lodge a couple of those nails into your opponent to take them out of the fight. Just one if it slaps them in the face, giving the nail gun a decent amount of stopping power, despite the fact that it's a friggin' power tool. Obviously it's not going to be very accurate, because you haven't got any bloody iron sights, but the nail gun is still a pretty fun, unusual thing to be able to pick up and use, being a lethal weapon that's not technically a weapon. Anyway, going from a nail gun to a railgun. In third place, we've got Battlefield 4's Rorschmark 1, 
one of the coolest, craziest things you'll be able to use in the series. The Rorschmank one came along in the final stand DLC, and looks like some sort of futuristic alien cannon that you'd probably expect to find in a science fiction film, charging up its energy to blast out some ridiculously fast moving bullets that inflict loads of damage to soldiers and live vehicles. And if your shot happens to land on another player, then that other player isn't going to be getting back up. Because of the way this gun functions, having access to a single high powered shot per use and needing to build up its power first before it can be fired, this makes it a one of a kind weapon that essentially acts like an ultra dangerous sniper rifle, capable of inflicting damage to practically anything it wants to over pretty much all ranges. There aren't many weapons in the Battlefield games quite as unique as this one, having access to its own 20 times optical attachment, blue laser sight, and with it having its very own distinct mechanics. The Rorschmark 1 is definitely one of the most powerful things you can use in the series, and it's not every day you get a chance to use a portable railgun as you play a modern day military shooter. Just like the last battle pickup, our next weapon can also be found on Battlefield 4's final stand DLC, and this comes in the form of a really wacky looking experimental combat drone called the XD-1 Occipiter. Although not an entirely useful thing to use for gunning down players effectively, the XD-1 is still one of the strangest things you'll be able to pick up and use, sort of acting like a killer MAV that hovers around, peppering targets on the ground below with shots, and generally being a bit of a nuisance, like a wasp that just keeps on buzzing around trying to harm people. Just like a wasp, it can be squashed pretty easily, so it's not always a great idea to go attacking large groups of players running around together, as they're probably just going to shoot the XD-1 down before it really has much of a chance to do anything productive. Though it's still pretty useful against weakened targets and lone players, especially if those lone players happen to be snipers, they are often going to have a pretty hard time trying to hit you with their rifles. It's only got a limited amount of fuel, but you can keep the bullets whizzing by for as long as the weapon's around, having access to an infinite supply of ammo, which can be quite handy. The XD-1 Occipiter is definitely one of the weirdest battle pickups in the series, because of the way it looks and works. So my number one most unique weapon in the Battlefield games is the Katana Sword from Battlefield 5's Pacific DLC, a weapon that not only seems like a pretty bizarre thing to be running around with in a military shooter, but also one that has its very own unique mechanics to separate it from practically everything else. This is sort of like a really powerful melee weapon that's got its own properties, having different slash moves depending on which button you press to attack. It's always going to slice its victims down in just one hit, making it super deadly in close quarter situations. Plus you're also going to be able to move around a lot quicker when you've got it equipped, and you can actually gain health from killing enemies, and shorten the waiting time before your health starts to regenerate, allowing you to take on a few guys really quickly and easily if they're up close, and not ready to take you on. Unlike a lot of pickup weapons, the Katana Sword acts as a gadget when you find it and equip it, allowing you to still use other weapons and gadgets alongside it as you play. And although it might not necessarily seem like the most batshit crazy thing to be able to use in the Battlefield games, the fact that it functions in an entirely different way to pretty much all of the other pickup weapons makes it a really unique thing to be able to use. So those are my top 10 most unique pickup weapons in the Battlefield games. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up if you did, and make sure you subscribe and apply all notifications if you want to be the first to see new content coming up in the future. Take it easy folks, and I'll be seeing you in that next episode.